Now then, let me use it up here. <laughs> Bouju, and welcome back to Quitting Weed, number, I'm not even sure why I'm numbering these anymore because I can never remember what number it is. Number 30 maybe? Yeah, I think this is 30. My name is Michael Lyons, and this is the online video diary of a middle-aged starving artist and marijuana addict. About a month ago, I don't need to do every, <laughs> every show doesn't need to be an introduction to the show. So yeah, I tried to quit weed. I quit weed, but then I relapsed. And <laughs> I promised myself I would do this video thing to hold myself accountable not really sure what that meant until I, I told the viewers, well, if I ever relapse, I promise I will be honest about it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be one of these phony people who, you know, lives a second life. So I relapsed and then I was stuck <laughs> with this video that sounds like it's going to be a coaching how to quit weed. And instead it's just, eh. <laughs> yeah, I quit weed once. I quit it a couple of times. It occurred to me today that I, uh, I've been sober. I've been high almost every day, but I haven't had a drink of alcohol in over seven years. And I had a, you know, a pretty serious alcohol addiction, habit, dependency. You know, no one ever called me an alcoholic because I was surrounded by alcoholics and I grew up in an alcoholic culture. But, you know, I drank beer every day. I started drinking when I was 14, 13 or 14. I might've been 13. The first time I had a beer and got drunk. And it was one of my happiest memories. <laughs> you know, I can't say, I can't sit here and go, kids, don't drink. It's a stupid drug and you know, it'll ruin your life. And that's true. It will. But whatever. I mean, I guess it didn't ruin my life. I never had got a DUI. That was lucky. Um, but you know, 
I suffered from all the consequences of living a drinker's life. Had a beer gut. <laughs> you know. I, uh, I knew women of ill repute. It affected my, uh, it probably, you know what? I, I became much more creative and productive in these last seven years than in my entire life. And I think it was because I quit drinking. I also lost all my friends when I quit drinking. I mean, they didn't say they dumped me, but when I quit going to bars, I lost my band, of course. And I didn't say, I'm no longer going to play in bars. I was still going to play in bars, but we stopped having fun together because they would get super drunk and I wouldn't. And I'd be playing in a bar full of drunk people for four hours on a Saturday night. And I'd be the only non-drunk person. Even the staff was drunk. At the beginning of the gig, I'd ask them to, uh, you know, make me a pot of coffee. They'd be like, well, you want a whole pot? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And it's weird. Co bars act strange when you ask, order a coffee. It's like, you guys are a restaurant too, right? I presume you have soft drinks. You must have a coffee maker. A coffee machine. Well, I'm going to be playing for four hours and singing and I have tons of water, but I'm going to need coffee because it's, it's going to be a late night, you know? <laughs> and they're like, okay, <laughs> I don't think I can drink coffee after noon. And meanwhile, they're having their seventh beer. <laughs> okay. But whatever. Um, so quitting weed. What can I say about weed? And how things are going. Still smoking weed. You know, it's it's part of my morning ritual. I wake up incredibly early, usually around three, three in the morning. I make coffee and I have a cigarette and I go sit on the throne and I come in here and I pack a bowl of marijuana and I smoke and drink coffee, I have a second cigarette <laughs> and set up for the Buju Nana Buju podcast, a podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. And I'm getting really excited for our uh, live gig at the Big Top Chautauqua. And I think we're visiting a couple of schools. I kind of forget the details. I'm really hoping they contact me soon with a contract. The idea, I mean, we, we had an agreement, you know, on the internet and I sent stuff and whatever. And it's going to happen. It's advertised. I'm doing a couple of shows and I'm going to hang around and play at their open mic or their whatever on the, the, the big stage. But I'm going to get to, you know, meet with kids, talk about the show, talk about Ojibwe language and culture. And the more I do these, this is the weird thing too about quitting weed. So I wasn't able to quit weed, but because of trying to quit weed, I've become more comfortable talking in front of the camera as myself. Um, hello everyone. <laughs> and so I feel more prepared to do the shows than ever before. I mean, I've done live shows before, but this is going to be really good because I can also, you know, bring my guitar, bring the characters. The, the hard part's going to be containing all the material I have to just one hour. Nanabuju can tell stories, teach phrases, sing songs, Natasha, and then I can talk about, and I can come out as me, you know, the puppet, and talk about the art of puppetry um, and how we create the show and why we create the show. And then I'll close out the show with t 
telling my own personal story of me as a descendant of boarding school Indians and the impact of uh, Native Americans losing their language and culture at the boarding schools and what it did to the families generations later, me. And I can share the song Home about my grandfather running away from boarding school and win everybody's sympathy, come back on and do a boujou not a boujou fun song and close out the show, it'll be great. If I can just survive financially until September 9th. <laughs> That's the only uh, challenge I have right now. So, okay. Um, let's call that a, an update. Thank you so much for listening to Quitting Weed by Michael Lyons. Um, I'm going to close out the show with a song that I wrote for the podcast, Boujou Nana Boujou, a uh, podcast about Ojibwe language, yada yada. <laughs> Welcome to Buju Nana Buju, the podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. <laughs>